still under old business? We are. I believe it's appropriate for us to bring up the motion that was tabled to the last meeting. Is that correct? It is. As you know, we ta we had a, uh, a motion at the last meeting uh, made by myself, which I subsequently agreed after some discussion to table it because it was a desire on some members' part to do some uh, research on the matter. And so we agreed to table it last. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, I agreed that I would put the motion in, in, in writing, which I have done, distributed to each member before this meeting began. And for those watching at home, they can also read it on HamptonBud.com. The motion is there as well. Well, let's see if you got an extra copy. I do. Copy. Well, do I need one? Copy. I'm going to give you one, you know, for I'm the minutes. I'm going to give them one in the booth. Do you want one for the camera? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I guess she wants one for herself, don't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. As good as you can. <coughs> Thank you, Jim. Yeah. All right. So I, I made this uh, this motion in the proper legal form, as I understand it, for written motions. So forgive the legal lease, but I kept it to a minimum. Essentially, the facts are out there, again, on HamptonBud.com, and, and pretty much everyone's seen it. That's also uh, was presented by me to the Board of Selectmen, the essential facts of the matter. And they're contained in the motion. So I guess uh, you want me to read the motion, right? No, why don't you read the motion? This is relative to the uh, town planner's position. And, uh, whereas the uh, voters of Hampton's town meeting have, for three consecutive years, refused to approve the position of town planner, and whereas a town planner was hired in direct breach of the voters' will, and previous committees have been reluctant to defund the position, which would have caused hardship upon the individual hired, and whereas the town planner's position is presently vacated, and whereas the budget committee respects the will of the voters and democracy itself, and seeks to demonstrate proper respect for the voters of Hampton's town meeting. And, whereas continued disrespect of the voters' will would constitute a fatal blow to the fundamental principles of democracy. And, whereas the individual budget committee members, finding that taking no action to remedy this breach of voters' trust, would cause each member to violate his or her sacred oath of office, which I might add, I say sacred because we, as Jim just noted, invoke God when we promise to be adherent to the Constitution. And while I didn't put it in my motion, I, w I do want to make note that in uh, uh, Article 1 of the New Hampshire Constitution Bill of Rights, it clearly says, all government of right originates from the people and is founded in consent. Consent. Founded in consent. And herein we have factual history that's gone irrefuted that what we see is nothing but dissent on this issue as an official matter. Therefore, be it resolved that the Hampton Budget Committee intends to zero out the funding of the position of town planner until such time that the voters affirm the creation of the position and instructs the chairman of the Budget Committee to cause the public distribution of this motion and especially cause the distribution of this motion to be made known to every member of the Board of Selectmen and Planning Board and to advise said board members <coughs> that no such hiring of anyone into the position of town planner should occur until the town planner's position is affirmed by the voters. Can I have a second, please? I'll second that for discussion. Thank you. All right. Richard? Back in the minutes of last month, this motion was tabled and reopened to the April meeting after research has been completed. What other research was done on this as to whether or not this was a 
proper procedure for hiring the town planner. Are you yielding it to me for purposes well, of answering Well, you're the one that has put forth mm -hmm. a motion. I'm happy to answer your question. I just want to know whether it's rhetorical or not. Well, I mean, through, the, through you, uh, to you, through the chair. Okay. What other research have you done that refutes the fact that we have legally hired a town planner? Okay. That over the past 14 years, you're saying that this began, that the votes th were taken for three years, that the voters voted against hiring a town planner, and yet over the past 14 years, we have had a town planner. Have you done any research to refute that what they had done hiring this town planner was illegal or immoral or whatever? Yes, it violates the consent clause of Article One of the New Hampshire Constitution's Bill of Rights. Then how was it possible that the town planner has been in existence for the past 14 years? Because the town manager at the time uh, exercised arbitrary power in ignoring the voters' will, and in so doing. He has, according to Article 12 of the Bill of Rights of the New Hampshire Constitution, produced upon us an act of oppression which is absurd, slavish, and destructive to the good and happiness of mankind. That's a quote from Article 12 of the Bill of Rights of New Hampshire. Those are not my words. Yeah. He took authority away from the voters and acted completely arbitrary on his own without basis, without any legal authority to do this act and nobody that is the definition of arbitrary power and over the past 14 years no one has brought forth a dispute or a uh, the fact that there was not arbitrary power and that it was done within his legal authority to do so there was I spoke actually to the chairman of the board of selectmen at the time no no, no let me phrase this uh, in the presence of the chairman at the library just uh, before the election when the chairman was having an open session on the budget committee and the chairman of the board of selectmen at that time showed up at that meeting and we had exhaustive discussion on the matter. It was a good discussion. It was. And he informed me that, uh, I'm sure you remember this Eileen, he said, we just showed up one day and the, the town manager announced that there was now a town planner hired. And from his point of view, there was nothing the Board of Selectmen could do. It was a done deal. That's the facts. You're a witness to it, Eileen. There's a little more. I'll do it on the, I'll do it on the wrap up. I, ju I just find it hard to believe that over the past it's 14 stunning. years. I agree. It's stunning. That nobody disputed this. I mean, we've had watchdogs well, in this community was. for years. There was a board of selectmen member who, who tried to challenge Bonnie Searle at the time. She was effectively silenced, as she had on many occasions back in those days, as you may recall. But there was some pushback, but uh, because of the nature of the situation, where it was a done deal and all. And, and you know, no one wants to fire someone and just have to hire them. It's just, it's just a very hard thing to do. And, and, and when you discover that, you know, the position wasn't created in a proper fashion, it's like, well, it's a hard thing to do to fire someone on that basis. But now the position is vacant. Now we have the unique opportunity to do it right. That's, what sh that's what's unique about now versus five years ago or 14 years ago. See, I, I have two problems with this. The, the first is that, that I just stated, that for 14 years this has been arbitrarily funded and with no pushback from what I consider, like you mentioned, you mentioned Bonnie Cyril, uh, you, you brought up her name, yes. I'll mention two others. I'll mention Bonnie Cyril, I'll mention Arthur Moody, and I'll mention Mary Louise Wosley, who are three upstanding citizens of this community who are, I'll use the term as watchdogs, and that it never happened before. This never has been brought up before until 14 years later. I find that hard to believe. The second, part, the second part of what I, I'm looking at here in this motion of yours 
I, I, I look at it as being budgeting in reverse. Our function here is to review the budget that is presented to us by the department heads and either approve or disapprove what we feel is either inappropriate or too much money or whatever. That is our function. This is telling us or this is suggesting that we go back tell the department heads before they even presented their budget to us we're not going to fund that because for whatever reason it's like saying to the fire chief don't you dare propose us to hire three more firemen because we're going to turn it down he hasn't even proposed that yet there has not been any documentation in our in the forthcoming or in any anything that I've heard that there is a plan to fund a planner in next year's budget so I'll use that term again budgeting in reverse dictating or telling department heads what they should include or exclude from their proposed budgets that would have to go through the whole process before it gets to us that's why I have a problem with this those two points but first of all, I don't think that uh, that any further documentation uh, has been proven to me that what was done over the past 14 years in planning, filling this position has been illegal or whatever, or immoral or whatever you want to call it, or arbitrarily done without the knowledge or without the approval of the appropriate authorities to do it. And the second point is that this proposal to me is, I'll use the term again, reverse budgeting and trying to dictate to department heads what we, they should include or exclude in their proposals that we haven't even said yet. That's my position. Jim? Yeah, uh, I'm not really up to date on it because I just got to it tonight, but I, you know, I've heard you speak about it before. And my, before I made any decision, I would want a legal opinion from, from legal exactly what's going on with the planner and, and what they how they see it is, as being said. The other thing would be, uh, I, I agree 100% on, on, the, on the reverse budgeting. I don't see how you tell somebody not to put something in their budget before it's there. That, that seems out of place to me. And the other thing is, why didn't, is it more appropriate not for a board to zero out a budget, but for somebody to bring a suit against the town or something that, I mean, I just, don't know if this, I don't think this is the proper way to go about it myself. <coughs> I'm just wondering uh, if we have any communication from the boards that we've mentioned. Um, has there been any communication with the Board of Selectmen or the well, Planning me, Board regarding this? Let me add, I guess now I'll jump into that. Mike, mm -hmm. you took it on yourself last meeting to make contact with our town attorney. Yes, I did, and he uh, very carefully said that he might be involved, uh, what's the right word, probably representing or supporting in case this gets rough, the planning board or board, the board of selectmen, and therefore the budget committee is <coughs> at the end of the line. He didn't say those words. That's what I filled in. I missed myself. who you said you talked to, Mike? Mark. Oh, okay. Mark, I just Mark, our town attorney, and he, he was very careful about what he was saying because he's, there's a possibility that the planning board and or the selectmen might get involved with this if it comes push comes to shove and because he is the hired by the selectmen his first responsibility and legally and every other definition is the selectmen and then if, if, if the selectmen do <coughs> not get involved with it for whatever reason then he probably would go to the planning board because they've already talked about hiring a new planner so he and I had that discussion and while I was there I presented him with the copies of the three warrant articles that Tim had provided me and he said he would look at them and I, uh, I haven't had a chance to talk to him since then to see what he thought of those warrant articles however in support uh, before I give it back to the floor I will say that Tim's point is well taken in that all this stuff about the budget and so forth the legislative body said no three times. So let's remember that. 
they are supposed to be the final answer on what happens in Hampton. So I'm going to support that part of his argument. The only thing, and you say about the reverse budgeting, the money's already in the budget. If the default budget passed, that comes about in, 20, in 2015, it'll be in that budget also. So when it comes to reverse budgeting, we haven't got the budget yet, but if we tell them that we, they're doing something that we don't approve of in advance, they can plan accordingly. So I don't think that's reverse budgeting, but I'll turn the floor back to you. Okay. And I'm sorry to interrupt it going around, but I just want to shed some light so we're not asking repetitive questions. I followed up after that with Michael and spoke to our attorney as well. And he is in that position where he may have to represent another board. Something that this committee, most of you know, some of you don't. When it comes to legal representation from the attorney in this town, we can go, we can ask questions, we can get things clarified only as long as it doesn't involve another board. And they will predispose us. And there is a process that we were told we can go through when we have a legal question. In other words, if I didn't agree, Jim, with the Board of Selectmen, we didn't agree as a, as a committee with the Board of Selectmen, the attorney represents you. We have to go to outside counsel. This created a few problems for us a few years back, where we actually had committee members willing to take money out of their own pocket to pay for that legal opinion, and thankfully somebody stepped up to the plate and gave us a legal opinion for nothing. Uh, they didn't charge us. Since then, we've come to this agreement. We won't put money in our budget as a committee as long as we can have some access either to Mark or to outside counsel that would be paid out of the outside counsel budget. But then again, that would go through Mark and be approved by Mark. I don't think we're there in this situation. I think it's a sticky situation. There's a lot of substance um, to what Tim is saying about three times, three consecutive times, no means no, okay? And the vote is voted no, and this individual was hired, but there's another piece of that. And that did come out of talking to that chairman of the Board of Selectmen at that point in time. We profoundly needed a plan, or we were on a burst of development as we are now. And we needed a planner. We were using the circuit rider um, from Rockingham County RPC. at that time. And that brings up the question, can we go back to doing that? What might be cost effective or more cost effective? Can we get through the rest of this year with the circuit rider? Would it do us better? Is the circuit rider even available to us anymore? Um, would that it may not save us money, but it may save us on benefits. And you may bring someone in who has a more open view. This is getting into policy, which we don't want to get into. But it is what started out as a part-time <coughs> position because the planner that we just lost was not the original planner hired. Right. It's the second one. So what you get into here is you're, you're looking at the whole department. You started out with a part-time planner, you ended up with the department, in effect. It's, it's under the planning board, but it functions like a department. You have a planner, you've got a secretary, you buy equipment, the, the budget enlarges itself every year. This is thus an opportunity to give the voters their due and turn it all back. All of that being said, here's the problem as I see it. We're going on the no means no law, and the no means no law kicked in in 2004. And you could not do today what was done when this planner was put in. If you, yeah, if you voted it down, it would have to stay down. And the no means no law was really... Um, a little bit of a finger in the dike mechanism for the things <coughs> that were wrong with SB2 at the time. I have the feeling that if we got all the way down to the crunch, that somebody would turn around and say, no, it wasn't ethical, but there wasn't anything to prevent it. 
and since it has gone on <coughs> and you haven't had a recent vote in 14 years after 2004 but here again I'm no attorney I think it's a very valid question and a lot of issues here to throw up and discuss and not just run out maybe and I would like to have seen more discussion on alternatives to get through this year but here we are back in the same position where as we were back in around the year 2098 1998 1999 that we have a lot of development going on we need a planner in some capacity not sure what that capacity is as we talk about dollars and cents because we've heard no options whatsoever and certainly as we create these positions it is far clearer to have it go to the voters and have a vote and a clear consent of the legislative body in this town that this is in fact what they want that that I mean I agree with all that but I'm just saying I don't know if it's this board's position I, I think it should be pushed on another board and it should be pushed there I don't know if it, through the budgeting process if that's the position to go and that's my feeling on it well this an answer a little bit to Michael and for what Tim has here it is always our position to follow the dollars and cents we can sit here and we can say no to the bottom line of that budget in essence and remove that line entirely that we can do to just do it without all the options being afforded to us without any possibility or, or possible possibility of correcting things that have not been wrong um, or have been wrong I mean going forward you have all that laid out in this one position and how you go forward we're not a policy board Jim and maybe continue around the table, please. I would like to do that to those who haven't spoken yet. Oh, we're still well, over here. Well, if I could just, we kind of got off when I asked about communication with other boards. Um, I, I don't know what the policy or procedure is on that, but can this board have a communication through a letter to the planning board or to the board of selectmen saying that we would like some clarification on the issue? And where where is their opinion on on what's happening with this right now? It just seems that we, we we're dealing with a lot of what ifs and we're pulling things out of the air. But I I don't think we have what the board of selectmen's um, stand on is on this. I don't think we have the planning board well, stand on. Well, I've I've spoken to the town manager and I heard that the position has already been posted. So. But do we know that? I mean, I, we ca I, I can't vote on something if, if exactly. you talk to the somebody at the library and you talk that's to somebody I'm at the library and you need exactly. That's why <laughs> yeah. I'm saying if if we can do. Well, it I'm talking to Fred Welch and a town mm -hmm. attorney. So yeah, but no, but I mean, if but they're I mean, telling me that we the as a uh, committee are aware of these conversations, which we should yeah. should be aware of, and they should act, actually. I don't think these conversations should have existed to begin with. So send this in a direction, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Well, as long as we're having a conversation. Well, okay. let's finish going around the table, Tim. Okay. I think clearly this is a policy matter beyond mm -hmm. the normal scope of this board, which could lead to other policy matters being argued. If this one is adopted, some other policy matter could be adopted. My second thought is the tenor of this epistle is pretty confrontational pretty inflammatory. I have a particular problem with the paragraph that says that I would violate my individual oath as a member of this board if I didn't agree with this. That is something I am not prepared to support ever. Uh, in our last meeting we discussed having a member of the planning board come here to try and explain what happened then. I don't know whether they refused to come, whether they were invited to come, anything about that. But right now, this just seems to me we're going to get into an area anticipating something that we do not formally know has occurred. Mm -hmm. The remedy for this committee to is address it if the budget line item shows up <coughs> for hiring <coughs> someone at that point in time. But as has been ha has been mentioned. 
the budget line item is already there in the default budget. Then they run the risk of this committee zero zeroing up in the new budget. Yep. And that's a risk they may be willing to take for practical reasons. You mentioned the enormous amount of development that's occurring. And if, an, if there is no control over that development, bad things will happen. And development at this point in time is critically important because we're getting into weather issues and how that development is built and whether it takes into account global warming uh, has a, an important impact on the outcome for all of us. But I, I would be opposed to this as is written. This is very complicated. I've got to say that um, I've got to say that when we vote, the legislative body in this town votes, the, in, in our democracy, we all get a chance to vote, and I always vote. Now, I also, <clears throat> I might vote no, and everybody else votes yes, and I accept that outcome because that's what I go into it with the understanding that the majority if they say yes there are going to be some that say no but and if I'm among those no's then I can accept the majority's vote okay when I go and vote I'd like to think that my vote is being counted and if the three years in a row I read the article Tim has posted on a web page called uh, HamptonBud.com. He's his argument, but he also has the three articles there, and he has the outcome of each of those articles. This the first year, it was voted down flat no. The second year, it was voted down three to one no. Okay. Um, each year, the the results varied, but it never got close to being yes. Okay. That was. 2000, uh, 1998, 1999, and 2000, and the general, uh, it, it's, it's, it was then in 2000 done anyway by the uh, James Barrington, is, is that who was the mm -hmm. manager? Yeah, okay. Yeah. And so it was done, even though the voters clearly said no. And so is it our place to take this on? Well, the discussion started with the Mr. In Year was, you know, there are other watchdogs. Nobody, you know, nobody did anything about this. Well, does that mean that nobody should continue to do nothing? The thing is that now we have somebody that, a new watchdog, okay, uh, Mr. Jones. He's, he's going to be our new watchdog, I guess. He's bringing the issue to light, to the public light, whether it's starting at this committee and goes out from there. Um, it, it doesn't matter where it starts. It doesn't matter. It, well, actually, he went before the selectmen and presented this case, okay, and asked them directly. So this is not, it hasn't just started here. He actually has already gone to them and visited them. And... I would say that um, this definitely is, it's like drawing a line in the sand as far as saying this budget committee doesn't like this action. It, it is de definitely, it's, um, it's drawing a line in the sand, but at the same time, what was done, I believe, was probably not ethical. and. I know that you mentioned in 2004 they had to pass a law at the state legislative uh, at, at that level that no means no. To me, it doesn't matter that they passed the law in 2004 and this actually happened in 2002. They certainly, the fact that they passed a law now that says no means no, that is a ridiculous argument to think that, well, they did it in 2000. So it no meant yes back then. No. <laughs> no meant no. And it was a clear majority. As I said, the second time they did it in 1999, three to one, no, we don't want this. So 
and then it was done anyway. So thank you, Tim Jones, for being the new watchdog and bringing this information to all of us, okay, and all the people in this town. You've done a, a service to the legislative body, and I support this, okay? Thank you, Steve. I would just like to say that I personally think a town planner is a good thing. I, I think it's in the best interest of the town. However, um, if the voters have said we don't want it, then I think we have to adhere what the voters have suggested to us. I think it's also important that as a committee, the budget committee should either say we are in favor of it or against it. I, I think we should at least make our opinion known. Okay, coming around to me again. Here's where I am. When they did this originally, I agree. No means no. No means no was not in effect. And we're 14 years out. I think we're stuck in a legal rut that the no means no law didn't stick for those three years. Was it unethical? Yeah. Was it illegal? No. In my, my mind. Until we have a legal mind that's here. Tell me otherwise. For that reason, I don't know where we stand today. I don't know if the voters going in would vote no today. don't know how they would vote. And at the same time, I know what our needs are as far as planning in this community with the way it's building out. That's why I would have preferred to have seen something temporary and have it revisited in the bo voting booth for a more permanent situation. But I don't think that that's for this committee to say, maybe only comment on. So, Brian? <coughs> I have a problem. I agree with everybody here so far. <laughs> <That's good>. <laughs> um, <laughs> one little thing problem I have, though, is after 14 years, <coughs> um, unlike last year, over the years, we have passed budgets. The planner was in the budget. Um... One other problem that I see, and I can see it stemming from the very beginning, is the town manager at the time was doing two jobs. I don't think I wanted him to be the planner. And I see the need now more than ever of having a planner. The fact that they went around it, went around it, okay, yes, I have an issue with that. But now of all times, I really see the need for a planner. The last thing, um, I, w I really caution this board of saying in April we're going to start zeroing out because we disagree with something. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's the next thing? Uh, we're going to disagree with the Suckmans buying flowers for someone. Well, okay, we're going to zero right out next year. You can't use it. And I don't want to tell all the boards, you know, okay, this is the, this is our power. And I don't think that's the right way to go, is to say, okay, well, we don't like your decision or we think it's wrong. I think there's other ways we can do it. I think the fact that this was brought up at all is fantastic. Um, I think it's a lot to dwell on between now and the next elections, all as this goes forward if we get another planner. But I don't like going and telling other boards, okay, we don't like what you did. Okay, we're going to zero you out. I think that's, that's a bad precedent. Um, I have, it's a mixed bag with me. I think that the remark was made about reverse budget. The statute says the budget committee makes the budget. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. The responsibility is to make the budget literally legally right here so one could say that you have the power this committee has the power to zero line out if they so choose on one hand okay now on the other hand one could argue that the three times means no regardless when the no means no was passed because that was passed after the fact because there was a need for it because some towns were violating their legislative body obviously Hampton was one of them so I 
I see that point that, that we say known means known. They shouldn't hire a planner. I have no problem with that. So therefore, I think what this committee should do, I think there's a solution of this problem, maybe, is to send a, a message with this committee's approval to the planning board who's in the process of hiring a person and su suggesting to them that they hire a, a temporary planner from the RPC, which has always been available and still is to my knowledge, and also might be quite good at these things, by the way, because they have some pretty smart people over there. As we've seen some of the people here before. I don't always agree with some of the positions, but they got some sharp people. So that's a choice. We could send a letter and say, why don't you hire somebody temporarily? And then in the fall, put up a warrant article and let the voters approve it. Mm -hmm. Then the whole thing would be done. Okay? It would be finished. It would be legal, be all above board, and happy. For us to take a position on it right now that we're not going to fund something in the budget might be a little premature, but I think we at least ought to take the step of letting the planning board know that we think that this is the wrong way to go if we feel that way. Especially with the vote, voters saying three times no. I mean, the legislative body saying no three times. So my suggestion would be let's communicate to them officially to the planning board and suggest to them that we use a temporary person from the RPC and, uh, they, and suggest they put a warrant article in to fix the problem. They won't miss a beat. Okay? They haven't hired anybody yet. Person's gone, and if there's a real hardship going on right now with Mark and Fred doing the planning as it's progressing, which I know they're involved with, if they're having a real hardship, there's nothing wrong with the selectmen deciding to, or the planning board for that matter, whomever, to get a temporary person, not the selectmen, <coughs> the planning board, to get a temporary person from the RPC. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. We've done it before. And talking about building going on in Hampton, we do have a lot of building going on in Hampton. However, when the building is going along pretty good, you'll probably find that the planning board and the zoning board probably are really following things much closer than when there's a big lull. When there's a big lull, they tend to not have as many meetings and maybe don't keep up as much. One could argue that both ways. But I'm just saying that I think we need to say something to somebody because this is definitely a violation of the principles of democracy. And I think we need to do something. If we're going to not take the money out of the budget and not bring down ha that hammer, we at least ought to send a communication to the planning board telling them that this is not the right way to do business in Hampton. That's all I have to say. Yeah. I, uh, first of all, what we have here given to us through March is a default budget. And as I understand it, default budgets are solely in the hands of the selectmen as to how they want to work it and how they what they want to do with it. Um, this, the budget that this budget committee put forth failed. Therefore, the default budget governs. Selectmen have a lot of freedom with the default budget. You remember, Mike? Mm -hmm. So that's an issue. And my fear is, is there's seventy-four thousand dollars in the office of planning that could be seen as a dead carcass that could be picked over and used for other items uh, in other budgets like hiring full-time fire inspectors or something like that of that nature. But that would be one of my fears. But, you know, Mr. Barrington didn't hire this planner by himself. I'm sure he didn't. He had the support of the Board of Selectmen. He had to. I mean, I wasn't a member of the Board of Selectmen at the time, but I watched enough meetings to see that he always had them buying into um, what he did. Even when he laid off three or four firemen, he had the support of the Board of Selectmen. So he didn't do this by himself. And I don't know what the thinking was with that sitting board at the time. And neither do I know what the sediment is of the planning board currently. You know, I don't know how valuable the planner has been to them, what kind of value added he added, and what were the key things that he did that need to be continued to be done. I don't know anything about that. Um, and I don't know the selectman's position on this right now either. So, I mean, there's a lot of, this is muddled. And I understand what Mr. Citizen Jones have said, and I agree with him about the voters three times and, and, and went ahead and did this. This is not right. 
it happened. Um, current budget is seventy-four thousand dollars. It sits there, ready to be used, picked over, whatever. Um, and again, my concern is it may it may be allocated for other things, but um, and I didn't know a thing about them. Perhaps hiring another replacement, and I don't know if that's their thinking or not. I don't know if we have any power whatsoever of suggestion as to what to do with the 74. We can't zero it out, I don't believe. So I, I like the thoughts that have been expressed in terms of getting perhaps somebody part-time to take care of the, of the absolute necessities of the planning board that, that goes on, that's going on with the development down there with Green and Company and others. And um, take care of the basic necessities that, that, that the previous planner was doing, perhaps, coordinating the functions of the police and fire and DPW departments and all of that in terms of reviewing plans. I'm not, I, I just don't know. But I like the idea of that concept, that strategy of hiring somebody perhaps part-time. If that's what they want to do, I would support that. And then, and then when the new budget gets created and presented to us, Oh, by the way, when Barrington hired the planner and the, and, the, and the selectmen agreed to it, those budgets came before this committee. Hmm. And it was passed by this committee. Year after year after year after year. So this thing is not as simple as it, as it, as it appears, um, Mr. Citizen Jones' motion. But I would, I would support a temporary uh, position in here until the end of the year and then a fresh outlook on things and a good justification put forth and a warrant article put forth on putting forth a, a full-time planner and, and if we really all agreed with it, we could help sell it if we thought that was the right thing to do. And that's kind of where I stand on this um, whole thing. Okay, we have a motion. Anybody else on? Yes, I'd like to... to reply to some of the uh, observations that were made. <coughs> you know, the situation uh, became aware, uh, became uh, visible to me, these facts. I mean, they were visible to me. I was in town at the time. And I was researching an issue that came up in last year's budget deliberations about just where the source of authority is for hiring people. I thought, you know, somewhere I got the sense that it was the legislative bodies, the town meetings. And so I decided that I must have gotten, I have to find out why, I have to give something more substantive to that, that position other than just as my gut feel. And so I decided that, you know, it's probably, my gut feel comes probably from Warren articles. So I went to the library and I read the annual reports, which in the annual reports you'll see all the Warren articles and how they were voted for throughout all the years. So I went back to, you know, from the time we became an SB2 town, which was 1997, you know, so happened to have been the first year that I was eligible to vote in the town. Uh, and, and I do remember as I'm reading these Warren articles, oh, I remember that Warren article. I remember that Warren article, but I'd forgotten it. I'd forgotten it. And when I saw it three years in a row in the town planner question, and there were other issues that came up that I haven't even talked about, uh, I thought, gee, I, I remember this, but so vaguely. But when I'm seeing it in black and white, it's like, <laughs> So what do I do with this? Uh, this is clearly wrong. But I don't know what to do with it. So I started asking people, including members of the previous Board of Selectmen, how do you deal with this? How, how do we right this wrong? Yeah. And of course the big sticking point uh, for much, much of the conversation was actually, well, if you don't write it in its most pure sense, then we're going to have to fire the guy, and that doesn't seem right either. So I'm like, I don't know what to do. There are other issues that, that I, I, I spoke to, other elders in town, shall we call them, uh, to get their wisdom on other Warren articles. Each one of them had their own disruptive force if you tried to correct them. So I've been grappling with this in my mind for you know many months now. And then suddenly the town planner position got vacated. In fact, before it was vacated, the town manager uh, put the town planner on paid leave. 
and I went to the Board of Selectmen and informed them of the facts at that time, the previous Board of Selectmen. So now it became, once again, public knowledge that three years in a row, the voters said no. Mm -hmm. Subsequent to that, we had an election, and the town planner's position was vacated, to use a neutral, a neutral phrase. And so I went to the Board of Selectmen again. This time we have a new Board of Selectmen to, again, advise them to the facts and make a suggestion that they should not uh, proceed in opposition to the officially expressed voters' will on the question. So they have been noticed on this. It was the very night that they took the oath of office. The very night I took my new oath of office. You know, I'm sensitive perhaps more than I should be, Bob, about the oath of office, but I do hold it dear to me. And I do also. And, 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 and maybe, maybe today, I know, I'm a, I know I think strangely, Bob, <coughs> okay, and I readily acknowledge that, but I can't help myself. That's the way I was born, okay? <laughs> the fact of the matter is, today is April 15. Everyone in this country thinks this is tax day. I don't. Today, this is the 149th anniversary of the death of Abraham Lincoln. The man that took a bullet in his brain <coughs> to pursue one idea that a government of the people, by the people, should not perish from this earth. So, yes, I do you take it sensitively, but I take it naturally that way. Okay? This is not rhetorical garbage to me. I believe it in the marrow of my bone. So please, when I say that I believe to do so would be a violation of the oath of office, I believe that I can see no other way of seeing it. And I also I recognize that I may be having blinders on it because perhaps I'm too sensitive. I to think it. it's time to... So I'll leave that move point. The question. Move this question. Move the question. Uh, uh, excuse me, there are several points that were raised that I think need to be raised here. Uh, now, may we move the question several to people the chairman? Tim? Several people spoke about Telling other boards. I what think to do. everyone has expressed their opinion. Most <coughs> of all, I have not had my opportunity. You started this. Out. I made a motion. I did not have an opportunity to speak. Now it's my turn to speak. It's around the table. Here I am. A motion has been made to now, move the question. Yeah. Which will and, and, and I'm sure the chair will recognize that I ought. No, it doesn't require anything. We already established that. The chair will decide when to call a vote. I, I just, just did. The chair did. The point that I think an arbitrary the question ta is takes a vote. There were some serious started. allegations made that I think I should be entitled to speak to. I think that we've had some very seriously serious, um, deep conversation around this table, both in agreement and not. And I have not had an opportunity to speak to the mischaracterizations of this motion. I am going to call for a vote. Well, Madam Chairman, if I may, uh, you did go around the table when Mr. Jones has not had an opportunity to speak, even though he's getting a little vigorous. You know, looking at it from a fairness point of view, if you're going to treat all the members correctly, fairly, and equally, you got to give him a chance. Whether you like his I'd style or not, just, you're a, up just to another you. minute or two, Madam Chairman. I would give him give, give, give him a couple minutes more minutes. So. Yeah, yeah, I mean, finish it up, to him. But I will finish it no. up. Tom. I will ask that you keep it totally to this motion. Yeah, I'll try to keep my uh, passions right, out of it. <laughs> we, know <laughs> you're pa we know you're passionate, Tim. And we applaud that. Um, no, I however, don't. I wish I didn't feel that way, but I do. But in any case, uh, this, this motion is actually a very gentle motion because it does not tell other boards a damn thing. Nothing. It advises. It speaks about one our intent to zero it out doesn't proclaim that we are zeroing out anything. So there's no reverse budgeting going on here. We're not zeroing out a thing with this motion. We're only expressing our intent to do so. And the second one is an instruction only to get this message out to the other boards that we advise. We advise. We do not tell. We don't have the power to zero out something that's not before us. We don't have the power to tell anyone anything. But we can give advice. And so this was carefully constructed so that it does not 
um, go outside the bounds of our relatively limited authority, which is in fact the, the creation of the budget at the end of the year. And so we're expressing our intent that uh, you know that we're going we're to adhere to the voters' will as previously expressed. Now I know you spoke about no means no, and actually there is there's one different way of looking at that. If you want to actually invoke no means no, I think Mr. Branch made an excellent point. When we didn't need a law that says no meant no means no, it already meant no. Excellent point. But there's another point here. You say 2004 was when no means no became law. Well, they are acting under a no vote this year, 2014. Ten years after no means no was passed. So they're actually in violation of no means no when they act in violation of that no vote. Now, the planning board we have heard from. In fact, when this motion was discussed at our last meeting, the planning board met the very following evening. And what were they discussing in that meeting? The advertising of this position. And one of their members actually said, I don't know if we want to talk about this, but there is a philosophy out there that, that uh, the voters said no three times in a row. Well, it's not a philosophy. It's a fact. I've stated it numerous times in every way I can. No one has refuted it because it's on record at the library in the annual reports. The planning board said, no, we don't want to talk about that. So they just talked about advertising the job. So we already know their position. They intend to move forward. We need to let them know officially where this committee stands. That we're going to stand with the voters. After all, this committee is an extension of the legislative body. We are an extension of the voters. It is our job to act in their interests. And I submit to you that it's in their interest that we do not let any town manager, past or present or future, have veto power over the voter. Because effectively, that's what happened here. The town manager, Barrington, decided he was going to veto the voter who voted three times no. And the town manager said, oh no, I have veto power because I can manipulate the accounts. And Jerry, you're right, this is not a simple matter. And I can get into the details of the accounting mechanisms if you wish, but I don't think anyone's that particularly interested. But they were very tricky accounting mechanisms. And I can speak to them if you wished. Not tonight. But not it is tonight. not, a, no, no, I'm not going to. I'm only pointing out that I do not see this as a simple matter. All right. Okay. I saw it as a complex one. Jim, Jones. we've given you the courtesy of another. Thank you for that. I appreciate minutes. it. I'm happy to speak to anyone, including all citizens of this town or anyone on the planet, we about know. this issue at any time. All right. I am now going to move this for a vote. We have motion. We have it seconded. All those in favor? Somebody repeat the motion, please. You have it written in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. We're voting on, the on this, not the not to move the question, but on the letter itself. Well, yeah, the on the motion the question. I'll vote yeah. to move the question. All those in favor? I'm moving the question. Moving, moving the, question. the question. You're abstaining. No, I'm, I'm voting, voting no. Okay. Um, just to make it clear, mm -hmm. Jim Jones voted no. Okay. Now, voting on the question. It's it's written. It's before you. Also on HamptonBud.com for those at home. Mm -hmm. All those voting yes. Those voting no. Mm -hmm. 